Do you ever wish that you can go back to Henry Hudson, where we went to high school? Like, go back to it, like, not go back to it, because we've been back to it since. Right. But, like, like, that time when yes. I was a senior? Um, to uh, Maybe to redo, like, relive certain things, mm. but I didn't really like high school. Like, um, I didn't hang out with a ton of people. Um, so it was like when I got out of high school, that's when I actually made my best friend, you mm. know, and, and started hanging out with you and Walter a lot. Um, and you were dating mm-hmm. Bev Ramage through most of high school. Um, yeah, the last couple of years. And it was a tempestuous high school relationship. It was. It was. Um, yeah, lots of like, uh, well, we were, I mean, she was the first um, girl that I ever, I mean, how do I say it, banged? I guess. <laughs> um, when I was in 10th grade, so I was like totally untoward. Of course, yeah. I was going to marry her and all that other shit, you know. Um, but she went away to summer camp. Uh, every year right. so we started dating in the fall of i guess it was my sophomore year right. no my junior year um and uh went through to the summer and then she left for summer camp in which evidently she cheated relentlessly <laughs> and <laughs> and um came home and, and this is how fucking stupid i was at the time she came home pregnant <laughs> and and I, it never occurred to me that like it you're like I'm wasn't mine. I'm gonna be a father. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, she's like, oh no, you're not. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've never really told many people about this, so there you go. The um, Smodcast audience, <laughs> Smodcast exclusive. <laughs> My parents don't know they would have been grandparents. They're gonna be so pissed off. <laughs> and what happened? So at that point, do you break up with her? You're like, let's have the baby, and I'll yeah. be a father to it. Yeah, I pulled like a uh, what was the guy's name in Fast Times? <laughs> a Mike Damone. And yeah, shit. I pulled a Damone on her. Uh, no, her, no, no. You gave her cheap trick tickets and made her get an abortion. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was strange. Like I, I, I feel like I was pretty resourceful now. Like when I think about it, because I just gotten my license not too uh, long before that. And uh, we went to Freehold, which was, you know... One good, of the like, only places. Yeah, good, like, I don't know, about 25 miles mm. away and set it up and brought her there and then brought her back to my house and took care of her for, like, a day. And then she went, like, and we totally, like, and nobody when, ever knew. When did it, and did you know that it wasn't yours at this point? No, I still don't know. Like, I don't, I, I never knew because I didn't know until later on that she had been cheating. She finally told me. So that's when you took her to the clinic and shit, you were like, well, you know. I, I, I just assumed it was mine. I, yeah. you know, sadly, we have to get rid of our child together. And right, inside, right. she's just like, yeah. Yeah, together. mine and yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that summer, I had gone up to see her with uh, Pam and my sister went, too. Right. We took a ride up to see her. And, go, where was she? Um, it was called uh, Bear Mountain. Mm. Uh, it was like in, it's by the Catskills in New York. And... Uh, so we uh, we went up there, and then we stayed in a hotel overnight, you know, to visit and stuff. And for whatever reason, she had confessed to my sister that she had been cheating on me. Now, mind you, she'd been gone for like two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so she got there in the first night. She was like, I can't take it. Immediately, all, yeah, all, yeah. <laughs> but after that, there was the metal lady who you were kind of dating while we were hanging out. You weren't metal dating lady. her. You were just yeah, like, we were like seeing each other seeing and each messing other around. And she wouldn't fuck. Like, she just did she not want to fuck. Nah, she did some other stuff. What's the farthest that she went? Um, blowjob. She was okay. she was nice. She was okay, but I just didn't I just didn't have that dating. Oh, remember that love note too? Yes. <laughs> um, the love note was she. I think it was a last ditch effort to try to get me to go out with her. Can you imagine somebody begging me to go out with her? But um, I remember the line that we just could not stop laughing over. She was like, "I'll I'll treat you like gold." <laughs> <laughs> she was, this woman writes a really heartfelt fucking note. And it was long too. Was like, <laughs> Yeah, that that line, I would treat you like gold, to just <laughs> tickle the both of us. <laughs> um, second only to the fucking love note that Laura Johnson wrote you, where she wrote your name, Dear Brain. Yeah, my, my so girlfriend at the only, time misspelled. <laughs> <laughs> not only misspelling your name, because you're B-R-Y-A-N, right, right. but misspelling it B-R-I-N, and then misspelling that as yeah. B-R-A-I-N. She did. Not a good speller, that one. No. Nah. Remember the very first day in uh, creative writing... Um, we could not stop laughing and drawing little cartoons, and uh, there was like a break because they were such long classes, like three hours. And uh, Gene Snyder, he was our first. He was our, our teacher. First teacher, and he comes up and he goes, "If you two can't knock it off, I'm going to tell you to get the hell out of here." I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, why? Why are we getting yelled at? We're like 18, 19. Yeah. It was, uh, and also the class wasn't that big. It was only about like maybe fifteen people max. Yeah, at the most. But <clears throat> when when he says that we were like sitting there laughing and stuff, like it it was like. So fucking I was crying. noticeable. Yeah, yeah, we were like tears streaming down our face. 
coughing, like trying to hold it in and being that laughter where you're like, <laughs> 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 and like just obvious. And everyone would kind of look at us and shit, and we thought yeah. we were kind of pulling it off. And apparently we weren't because we got yelled at. But we spent most of the time <coughs> writing poetry about our fellow classmates um, that nobody ever saw that we just shared yeah. with one another, except one girl in the class. You fucking showed her. One of poems. Christine something yes. or other. Yeah. And she got real, she got this fucking look of like fear on her face where she yeah. was just like, you guys do this about everybody. <laughs> um, but I remember too, um, one of the class assignments was you had to write a story and then read it out loud and then everybody kind of critiques the piece or whatever. Right. And we went, we were like in the first group to go and we read our stories out loud and everyone was really like, wonderful about it like positive and encouraging and not encouraging like you'll do better next time but like this is fucking great like this is a great story no fu- no fucking um downside except for the one dude nishan who was always like i wanted a little mo <laughs> um never enough for that guy <laughs> never enough we didn't give him enough um so then like in the in the later session because there'd be a break it came time to listen to other people's stuff and Suddenly, the fucking praise that had been heaped upon us <laughs> just didn't seem like it was warranted, or it, because they praised everybody. Right. It was like reading like fifteen of your moms mm-hmm. just reading something, and they're like, "Oh, honey, that is the greatest thing ever." And, it's and like, have you ever read anything, mom? <laughs> it took the bloom off the fucking rose. Like suddenly, we were like, "These people are idiots." So it came to us <laughs> to criticize, like to, to you know comment on their pieces. And we were far worse than Nishan with I Wanted a Little Mo. It was right. just like, you know, the syntax is terrible. Scathing and, at times. Oh, yeah. just like really like a, a hardcore nasty almost. <laughs> but not in a way to just, not doing it for the sake of being nasty, just doing it because it was like, look, you want my opinion. That's yeah. what I think. You remember that broad, there was a woman, like a mother in class, and she wrote like a, she wanted to write children's um, books or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something. Jill, oh, what the hell? Well, her story was her called about Jill. Was Jill Becky's Fingers. Yes. And it was yeah. about a little girl with a glove and shit. Yeah. And then I wrote a poem called Fingering Jill Becky. <laughs> and the class instantly fucking turned on us. And suddenly it was it was 13 and sometimes the professor yeah. versus two. <laughs> and we became completely fucking disliked to the point where at the very last class before the semester ended at Christmas, we decided like... We had to win their favor. <laughs> Maybe back. we could win them back <laughs> the last day. And we threw a fucking Christmas party for them. And we like put up a banner that said Brian Kev's Christmas Extravaganza. <laughs> and we bought a lot of Dunkin' Donuts and coffee and shit. Decorated the teacher's seat with garland. Wrote Christmas <laughs> cards to every member of the class and shit. And we got there early and shit. So we were the first ones in class when everyone arrived. And we were like, surprise. The, the, there was no fucking, not a single glance of approval and then and we had written a fucking story to read at the end of class we wrote a story and co-wrote a poem yeah and we showed it to the teacher and we we're like do you want to read it out loud he's like i don't think that'd be a good idea <laughs> yeah he wouldn't let us do it and then class ended a little early um so that we could enjoy like you know the fucking bountiful feast we had brought and shit <laughs> and we handed out the christmas cards and whatnot and i remember like most people kind of stayed because there's free food and shit but still weren't hanging out with us but that one dude, Nishan, was like, so are we done here? And Gene was like, yeah. He's like, could I go if I wanted to go? And he's like, totally. And the dude got up and threw our Christmas card in the garbage. Unopened. Not completely unopened and shit. And we were like, Merry Christmas, Nishan. <laughs> um, and also, I remember leaving. Uh, whenever we left Brookdale, we would stop at the Willow Deli mm. and pick up uh, chicken salad. Willow Deli and, and Inkwell had the best chicken salad now that I've traveled like anywhere on the yeah. planet. But then Willow Deli changed there. They started getting like Boar's Head brand chunky chicken salad. Yeah, yeah, was good. But we would stop there all the time. I remember leaving Brookdale and going to the mall and buying my first like fucking CD rack system. Mm-hmm. And I remember <clears throat> buying CDs like I, and the CDs I bought in the presence of the god of metal <laughs> just left no end to fucking to ridicule. I bought a uh, Billy Joel album, which I got fucking mocked for <laughs> relentlessly, and then I bought Slow Grooves. <laughs> it was disappointing to say the <laughs> least. <laughs> and then I also bought the fucking She's Having a Baby. Yeah, soundtrack. that's the one I remember. <laughs> that was the trifecta of really fucking questionable slash gay music in, in your eyes, and took a lot of shit for that. <laughs>